Rheumatic fever is an immune-mediated multi system inflammatory disease which occurs a few weeks after group A beta hemolytic streptococcal pharyngitis. This rheumatic fever rarely also occurs with streptococcal infections at other sites such as the skin. It is principally a disease of childhood with a median age of 10 years, although it can also occur in adults. In the pathophysiology, rheumatic fever develops in children and adolescents following pharyngitis with group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, such as streptococcus pyrogenes. Group A streptococcus M proteins share epitopes or antigenic determinant sites which are recognized by antibodies with proteins found in the synovium, heart muscles, skin, central nervous system, and the heart valves. These antibodies which are directed against the M protein of certain strains of streptococcus, they cross react with the glycoprotein antigens in the heart, joints, skin and central nervous system to produce an immune response automatically through a phenomenon called as molecular mimicry. This leads to an autoimmune response. Genetic host risk factors include the D817 B cell antigen and class 2 histocompatibility antigens. The organisms attached to the epithelial cells of the upper respiratory tract and produce a battery of enzymes allowing them to damage and invade the human tissues. Group A streptococcus elaborates the cytolysis toxins streptolysin S and streptolysin O. And of these, streptolysin O induces persistently high antibody titers, which provide a useful marker of group A streptococcal infection and it is non-superative complications. After an incubation period of 2 to 4 days, the invading organisms elicit an acute inflammatory response with 3 to 5 days of sore throat, fever, malaise, headache and elevated leukocyte count. Ashkov bodies often develop in the myocardium and other parts of the heart. And the fibrinous non-specific pericarditis, sometimes with pleurofusion, occurs in patients with endocardial inflammation and usually subside without any permanent damage to these patients. In the signs and symptoms, acute interstitial valvulitis may cause valvular edema. If left untreated, valve thickening, fusion and retraction of other destruction of leaflets and cast may result, leading to stenosis or valvular insufficiency. Similarly, the cord in the eye can shorten, thicken or fuse, adding to regurgitation of damaged valves or causing regurgitation of otherwise unaffected valves. In the skin, the subcutaneous nodules appearing indistinguishable from those of rheumatoid arthritis but biopsy will show features of Ashkoff bodies. Erythema magnetum is a serpiginous, flat or slightly raised, non-scaring and penurious rash which is present in these patients. And it differs histologically from other skin lesions with similar macroscopic appearance. We have purpura erythema chronicum migrans and erythema multiform. And perivascular neutrophilic and mononuclear infiltrates of the dummies can also occur. In the central nervous system, we experience CD Hans Korea. And this manifests in the central nervous system as hyperperfusion and increased metabolism in the basal ganglia. Onset of this chorea is typically insidious and may be preceded by inappropriate laughing or crying and chorea consists of rapid and irregular jacking movements which may begin in the hands but often become generalized involving the feet and the face. Characteristic findings will include a fluctuating grip strength known as the milkman's grip, tongue darting, and associated motor symptoms will include loss of fine motor control and weakness and hypotonia. An initial episode of symptoms occurs typically about 2-4 to four weeks after streptococcal infection. In joints, we have migratory polyarthritis which is the most common manifestation and often accompanied by fever. Joints become extremely painful, tender and swollen. Ankles, knees, elbows and wrists are usually involved. 
Arthralgia like symptoms usually subside within two weeks. In the heart, we have carditis occurring alone or in combination with pericardial rub, mama's cardiac enlargement or heart failure. Patients may have high fevers, sharp chest pain or both. And mamas are common and although usually evident early and often persist indefinitely. Heart failure which is caused by combination of carditis and valvular dysfunction may cause dyspnea without rarities, nausea and vomiting, and right upper quadrant or epicastic ache and a hacking non-productive cough. Diagnosis of first episode of acute traumatic fever is based on the modified Jones criteria whereby we need two major criteria or one major and two minor criteria along the evidence of preceding gas infection. CD hand score alone without minor criteria fulfills diagnostic criteria if other causes of movement disorders are ruled out. Culture, rapid strep test or anti streptilizing O and anti DNAs B titers can also be used. And joint aspiration may be needed to exclude other causes of arthritis, for example an infection, and the joint fluid is usually cloudy and yellow with an elevated white blood cell count, composed primarily of neutrophils, and the culture is negative. Electrocardiogram is done during the initial evaluation and serum cardiac marker levels obtained, normal cardiac troponin 1 levels exclude prominent myocardial damage. Echocardiography can detect the evidence of carditis in many patients and uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate and serum CD active protein are sensitive but are not specific. Acute traumatic fever can occasionally manifest as fever of unknown origin until a more identifiable sign develops. In the Jones criteria, the major diagnostic criteria includes carditis, polyarthritis, cilian scoria, subcutaneous nodules, and erythema magnetum, while in the minor diagnostic criteria we have fever, arthralgia, prolonged PR interval, and acute phase reactants such as increased ESR and presence of CD active proteins and leukocytosis. In the treatment, the primary goals are to suppress the inflammation and relieve the acute symptoms, to eradicate the gas infection, and also to prophylax against future infection or to prevent recurrent heart disease. Aspirin controls fever and pain, which is caused by arthritis and carditis, and the dose of aspirin is titrated upward until the clinical effectiveness is attained or the toxicity supervenes. If a therapeutic effect has not occurred after the fourth day, which is sometimes the cause of carditis or arthritis is severe, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs should be abandoned in favor of corticosteroid, preferably prednisone. If inflammation is not suppressed after two days, intravenous corticosteroids, a uh, pulse of methylprednisone succinate may be given. Although post streptococcal inflammation is well developed by the time acute traumatic fever is detected, antibiotics can be used to eradicate any lingering organisms and to prevent reinfection. Antibiotic prophylaxis will include anti streptococcal prophylaxis and this should be maintained continuously after the initial episode of acute traumatic fever to prevent any recurrences.